You know Congress is up to something sneaky when, oh, well, when they do anything, it turns out. But releasing a must-pass funding bill at 2.30 a.m. must be super sneaky. But not to worry. GOA's federal lobbyist team is here to break down exactly what's going on in this bill and how it affects your gun rights. Hi, I'm Ben, and you're watching the Miniman Moment. Before we get into the video, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe to help us fight against YouTube's algorithm. So, Congress decided to release a must-pass funding bill at 2.30 in the morning. Since then, the federal affairs team at GOA has been combing over this thousand plus page bill and hundreds of pages of accompanying reports to find all the gun control that's been hidden inside. What's the pushback on the 72 hour rule? You said we're gonna get this done by Friday night, but that would mean violating the 72 hours. There's nothing sacred about 72 hours. The idea is you want to allow the legislation to be reviewed adequately by the members before they vote on it. We're trying to maintain it even in a time crunch. So lawmakers are racing through more than a thousand pages of the $1.2 trillion bill. Some conservatives are exasperated with Johnson for agreeing to the plan with Democrats. Now, as we mentioned in one of our more recent videos, the CDC and NIH should be prohibited from funding any studies that promote gun control. Of course, this bill adds $12.5 million for the same firearm mortality and injury prevention research at CDC and another $12.5 million at NIH. That's a grand total of $25 million to fund stuff like last year's studies on a firearm retirement age for seniors, safety checks, invasions of privacy to look for guns in pregnant women's homes, studying how effective gun confiscations are, here's a hint, they aren't, studies on mandatory waiting periods, expanded background checks, and so much more. Now, GOA and our allies fought against this funding, but the swamp didn't listen. You can't defend America's Second Amendment liberties and then fund gun control by the CDC. But don't worry, it gets even better. Senator Blumenthal managed to get $59,000 for an anti-gun lobby that promotes mandatory unsafe storage laws and lobbies to pass them nationwide. This organization wants to ban quick access to your firearms in a self-defense situation and wants the attorney general to have the power to confiscate your guns if they don't live up to the fairy tale standards where crime and home invaders don't exist. This $59,000 for firearm safety curriculum to middle school and high schoolers will no doubt be used to push anti-gun gun propaganda at public schools and misinform these kids on the Second Amendment. Any way you slice it, funding the gun control lobby is totally unacceptable. The bill also failed to defund several past gun control fundings. While we won a big victory last week stopping the VA from putting veterans on the prohibited persons list, this week Congress kept the funding for the Department of Health and Human Services to work with the VA to make gun storage maps of veterans' homes, where they can force unsafe storage and use red flag gun confiscation laws. Man, it seems like our veterans just can't catch a break. Here's also a bit of hypocrisy in this bill. While funding anti-gun studies and groups, Congress also wants to increase the amount of private security they get. They're so scared of violent crime in DC that they're increasing their security detail in the national capital region, while DC has some of the strictest gun control in the nation. Here's a win-win situation for the American people. Why don't members of Congress exercise their Second Amendment rights to carry a firearm? Not only would this save the taxpayers the cost of all those extra private security officers, but also maybe these elected officials would finally find an appreciation for the Second Amendment. But we know that will never happen because that would require these members to learn about the Constitution. Imagine the horror. And for those of you worried about how the Biden administration has weaponized the government against so-called extremists for owning a Gadsden flag or enjoying the Second Amendment, don't fret. They're coming out the gate swinging by, oh, they're just writing some reports and asking the same bureaucrats who made these anti-American documents to brief Congress. I love it when the accused get a chance to investigate themselves and say they did nothing wrong. So for your convenience, we're naming and shaming all the loser Republicans who just sold out your second amendment and wasted your tax dollars on this garbage. If you pause the screen, you can see the senators who voted for this. And here are the Republicans responsible too. Now, if your representative didn't vote for this monstrosity, give them a call at 202-224. 3121, and thank them for being the constitutional patriot they are. But for all of you with Democrat senators or representatives, or if you're represented by a Republican who voted for this anti-gun spending bill, give them a call and give them a piece of your mind. Thanks for watching and for being a gun rights activist who helps GOA hold Congress accountable.